Hi, it's Richard. You're welcome to uh, join me to do some yoga. We're going to start this particular session on my back, on our backs. Uh, eventually, we'll get up. I'm going to stay all the time on the back, although that might be quite nice. The great thing about supine postures is you've got the mat to support you, so the joints can open a little bit and you can stretch a little bit deeper quite safely. Um, but then we will eventually get up and we'll do some, some flows. Um, with all of these movements, um, be very careful with your body. It's your body. You've only got one. Take it easy. Don't push yourself. Okay, come onto your lower back. Bring your knees into your chest and give your knees a squeeze and release. Great way of massaging your lumbar discs. Really nice to do, particularly if you've got um, achiness, stiffness in your lower back. Any time of the day, this is really super, super good for your back. Okay, then drop your right foot to the floor. Lengthen, straighten, extend to your left leg. Hands around the back of the leg. Put the toes in the shin. Gently draw that leg into tension and back. And we're just feeling that sensation of tension in the back of the uh, hamstrings, in the hamstrings here, in the back of the thigh, and easing off. And we'll put it in and just feel, connect with that feeling of tension, of stress. Pushing the back of the knee away, putting the toes in. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your knee's bent. If that's straight for you and because the hammies are tight, that's okay. We just work to a limited range of mobility, whatever that is. And it doesn't matter what that is. Some people are more mobile than others. It does not matter, okay? Once you've done that a couple of times, just send that foot to the floor and we come back up with the other leg. Pull the toes in, gently draw it in, find that tension, back it off. These guided movements are a way of loosening off the stickiness of the tissues and the fascia. Once you've done that a few times, you pull it in, pull the toes in, push it back the knee away, feel that tension, that stress. Breathe nice and softly. Enjoying that feeling of stress. Don't we love it as yogis? Create a little bit of stress and breathe into it and see how we can manipulate that stress with our breath. Okay, and then head and shoulders on the floor. Arms out nice and wide. A little bit of windscreen wiper in the legs here. Just letting the hips roll from side to side. Nice, comfortable movement. Okay, then bring the heels up to your bottom. Plant the feet on the floor. Pull your navel in. Flatten your lower back into the floor. Arms down the side of the body. Backs of the hands on the mat. And then push up into bridge. So there's no pressure in your arms here. And it's just gently pushing the pelvis up and down. Push up and down. Get that nice movement through your hips through, and your hip flexors, hip flexors working. You can turn your palms down. And then next time you lift up, float the arms up and behind you, bridge with the arms, reach it up as far as you can. Driving up through the feet and then bringing the arms down, lowering the pelvis down, keeping the navel pulled in as you lower down. Draw the knees up into the chest, squeeze and release. Take the hands behind the hammies, use the momentum in the lower legs for a nice back roll up through the spine, providing it's nice cushioned on your floor. A couple of these massaging through your discs and roll up to a boat. <laughs> no, roll up onto your uh, feet. And then we're going to loosely cross the legs, lift up through the spine here. Very, very gentle twist around to the right, left hand to right knee, and look back towards your right shoulder, taking a couple of breaths here, softening through your hips, and twist around to the left, gently twisting through. Come back to the front, take the right hand to the floor, bring the left arm over the top, a little side bend, a gentle side bend. Again, just loosening off. Any stickiness, any tightness in the joints by these very gentle joint opening, fascia releasing postures. And come all the way onto your front, taking the knees outwards a little, sit back into child, inch the fingers to the top of the mat, big, big long stretch of your spine, your shoulders. And then come up. Put the toes in, the hips high, heels down. Find your first downward dog here. And again, nice and gently pedal into it. And lift your heels off of the floor. Bend your knees, stretch out through your toe knuckles. Lift the head up and walk on the top of your feet to the top of the mat. 
drop your bum down, put your belly button in, and then draw the arms outwards, and then lift your head up and slowly come up, drawing the arms out and high and up into tall mountain, and breath out, take the hands down, breath in, lift up, bend the knees, breathe out, take your hands down to your shins, and breathe in for a half lift, breathe out, hands to the floor, step the right foot to the back of the mat, Bring the left knee forwards, you get that nice stretch for your right hip flexor. Then drop the right knee to the floor, push up onto the left foot, pull the belly button in, reach the hands up into a crescent moon here, feeling that really nice, decent stretch for your right hip flexor. And release, come down, take the hands, point the fingers backwards, land on the floor. As you walk the hands backwards, straighten out through that left leg, Lifting the toes up, and then when you're in a position of stability, keep the heel grounded and pull back onto your sit bone, your left sit bone, softening through the thigh and the kneecap. So this is a really nice stretch of the back of the leg here. You can lower your chest down onto the thigh, and you already feel that deepening stretch. You can pull the toes back to stretch out through the gastrocnemius muscle around the back of the knee, and then come forwards. Plant hands on the floor. Lifting that knee off the floor, step back into downward dog. You almost might feel it in the back of that left leg. If I'm on your dog here, then it has a fruit of plank. Exhale onto your knees, tops of the feet on the mat, chest, chin to the floor. Inhaling into cobra. Draw the shoulders back. Breath out to the floor. Tuck the toes in. Push up into plank, or you can push up onto your knees. And then hips high, heels down, downward dog. Bend the knees, look up between the hands, and walking on the toes towards the top of the mat. And then ground the heels, drop the bum back, draw the arms back behind you, look forwards and draw the arms all the way up, tall mountain. Big breath in here. Breath out, bend the knees, hands down to your shins. Breath in, half lift. Still gently moving, opening the body up. Breath out, bend the knees, hands to the floor. Step in, left foot to the back of the mat. And bringing that right knee forward, so you stretch through that left hip flexor. And then dropping the left knee to the floor. Okay, steady yourself on your right knee as you push up, draw your core in, reach up, inhale, lift up, and lean into this lunge. You really give that hip flexor a stretch. And release. Lower the hands down and remember to take the finger to, fingers to point backwards and then walk backwards with your hands to give that stability as you lift your toes off of the floor, lengthen through your right leg, keep the heel grounded, pull back on that fixed heel, soften through the kneecap, soften through the thigh, lower the chest down on the thigh. It's a really delightful posture, this. I really like this half, this version of half split. It's controllable. You can really feel that tissue, that fascia stretching and then walk the hands forwards tucking the toes in if they're not already tucked in if the left knee off the floor step back into your downward dog we're going to take a side plank here so come forwards into plank now you can drop onto your left knee if um if that's uh, your thing inside plank absolutely fine nothing wrong with that you can roll onto the outer edge of your foot Stack the ankles or put one foot in the front of the other and taking the other arm up. Breathe in here. Keeping everything tight, keeping everything still, trying to find release where you can. Look down at the floor, bring that hand to the floor and roll onto the other edge, outer edge of the other foot. Draw the arm up. Feeling strong, feeling powerful, feeling grounded, keeping the breath nice and steady. These static postures uh, generate heat in the body. Look down at the floor, bring that hand to the floor, back into plank. Okay, take half plank or knees, chest in if you want. Half plank, elbows tuck in, come forwards. Now from here, you can roll or step onto the top of the feet, draw the chest forward through and up or come into cobra. And drop the knees, sit the hips back onto the heels, counter pose here. Cut between the hands, come up onto your knees. 
tuck your toes in, send the hips backwards towards the heels. Inch the hands forwards, bring the head in line with the arms. Looking down at the floor, push into your toes and straighten the legs. So just movement in the legs as you straighten the legs and you find your downward dog. Great way to come into downward dog. Alignment is great. Looking back at your ankles, feel the tension in the back of the legs, but you can feel that extension through the spine. Your arms are still in line with your head. Your head is in line with your arms, really building up strength in your shoulders. And enjoy this. Feel the tensions here. Feel the grounding through the hands and breathe. Lift your head up, look up between the hands, bend your knees. You can walk on your toes to the top of the mat, or you can little spring leap from your toes. So use your toes to spring the body and pull the knees into the chest. You get that sort of floaty movement as you jump forwards. And then from here, arms come behind you, keeping the knees bent, draw the arms out to the side and up as you straighten up here, tall mountain. And then palms come onto your chest. Lean into your right foot. Lift the left foot. Lean forwards as the left foot goes backwards. Find a moment balance here. Version of warrior three. Looking down at the floor. Pointing the toes. Bending through that front knee. As you take the toes and the ball of the left foot to the floor. Inhale the hands up nice and high. High lunge. Exhale for a lunge dip. Bend to the knees. Taking the arms out nice and wide. Get stretching through that hip flexor. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, twist to the right. Extend the arms out, shoulder height, palms face away. You twist all the way around to the right, using your core muscles here. Stay looking to the right. Drop your hand that's behind you, your right hand to the floor. Turn to the front, lift your left hand up to the ceiling. Keep rotating around to the left with your body. Ground your back heel. Find warrior two. Looking forwards, middle finger of right hand. Okay, turn the whole of the right arm up, breath in, reverse warrior, reaching back down the back of your left leg as the right arm comes over the top, and breath out. I'm going to all the way to the floor on the inside of your right leg, into a low lunge to the side. Use your hands, lift your toes off of the floor, your front leg pivot off the floor, pivot all the way around to bend through your left knee, straighten your right leg, lift your right toes up in a supported side lunge. So keeping the hands grounded here, feeling that nice extension stretch through the back of this leg. Stay here. You can feel the hip working here. You can feel the knee inflection, knees pointing over the toes. And then we're going to work our way around to the left. So lift your left toes up, pivot on your heels again, and then come into a low lunge, positioning your feet on this side. Lean into your right hand, twist to the left, take the left hand up for a lunge twist. And look down, come down. Draw the arms behind you into aeroplane. Weight goes down into that left foot and take flight as you step up onto the left foot. Find in the balance here. Slowly bring the body upright into standing staff, drawing the arms out nice and wide, drawing that right knee up. Breath in here. Exhale the foot to the floor, hands down the side. Mountain pose. Breath in, lift the hands up nice and high. Breath out, straight leg forward bend. Bend the knees, hands to the floor. Walk, step or jump. Back to plank. And inhale, shoulders forwards. Pressing into the floor with the fingertips. Take a breath in here as you breathe out. Half plank or knees, chest, chin. And breath in cobra or high cobra or upward dog. In this case, drop the knees and then exhale as child as you draw back on the hips. And then come forwards just a little bit, tuck the toes in, send the hips backwards to the heels and launch into downward dog as we did before. So driving through the feet, come into your dog here, taking a couple of breaths here. Feeling the work going on in the shoulders. Pressing into the base of the thumbs and then turning the elbow creases forward. You get a very slight external rotation of your shoulders. OK, 
Okay. Put your head up, look up between the hands, bend the knees, walk on your toes to the top of the mat, or that little springy jump to the top of the mat, bend the forward bend. Draw the arms out nice and wide, lift the head up, slowly elevate all the way up. So mounting, tall mountain, look up, arms come together, arms come down onto your chest. Lead into your left foot as you lift the right foot off of the floor. Lead forwards as you take the right foot backwards, pointing the toes, find that version of warrior three. Then step in the right foot to the back of the mat. Find your balance here. Pull your belly button in. Reach the hands up, high lunge. Breath in, exhale, lunge dip. Breath in, high lunge, and then a twist, the upper body around to the left, extending the arms, palms face away, feel it in the core, use the core to do the twisting and the holding and breathing into the ribs. And then dropping your left hand to the floor, lift the right hand to the ceiling, turn to the front, ground your back heel, keep the rotational movement going through, find warrior two, looking over the middle finger of your left hand. Turn the whole of the left arm up. Reach up, lean back. Find reverse warrior, open through the left side of the body. Breath in here. And a windmill down on the inside, lifting that back heel, hands to the floor. Okay, when the hands land on the floor, ground through both heels, lift the toes off. Walk the hands all the way back, straightening the left leg and find this hand supported side lunge. Put the toes back, feeling that really nice stretch of the hand strings and the adductors. It's great to feel the body weight on the hands because you can really release into this stretch. Just such a marvelous posture for tightness in your hands and your adductors. Putting that toe back, we can really feel it in the calf as well. So push into your hands. And then pivot on your heels again to work your way around into low lunge on this side. Lean into your left hand. Take your right hand up for a lunge twist. Down on the floor, bring that hand to the floor. Go and get a step back into a downward dog. Inhale through to plank. Exhale. To the floor, your way, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga half plank. And draw the chest forwards and up and back into cobra or upward dog. This time you can drop onto your knees, back into child, come forwards, lift into downward dog. Or if you're an upward dog, you can use your core to lift your hips high, roll or step over the toes, downward dog. Find your way back into downward dog. Look up between the hands, bend the knees. Practice these toe jumps. They're really cool when you can get them to work. Little spring with the toes as you float forward. Bend the forward bend. Drop the bum down. Pull the tummy button in. Draw the arms backwards. Driving through your quadriceps. Look up. Start to bring the body up. Tall mountains. Hands onto your chest. Weight goes down to your right foot. A little bit of a bend in the right knee as you lift the left foot off the floor. Lean forwards and take that left foot backwards. Stay here a couple of breaths. Looking down at the floor, hands to the chest. I'm going to bring the knee into the chest and then extend. Knee into the chest and extend. Knee into the chest and extend. Dropping the foot to the back of the mat. Draw the arms up. High lunge. Breath in. Exhale. Lunge dip. Breath in, high lunge, twist to the right. Breath in as you extend the arms out as wide as you can. And then next breath out, windmill. So hand behind you down, turn to face front, ground the back heel, windmilling all the way around, warrior two. Breath in here, breath out, drop in. Breath in, reverse warrior. Breath out, windmill down to the floor. This time, up onto your heels, walk your hands to the center. Pigeon toe or parallel your feet, inching your feet nice and wide. <clears throat> we go for a wide leg forward bend. Soften your thighs, hands to the floor. If you need a block, 
find a block or a book, <coughs> excuse me, and then lower your head, chest to the floor. Passive stretch here. Let gravity draw you down. Don't force it. <coughs> excuse me. And then see where you go. Now, if you're getting a bit cramped with your hands, you can turn your fingers to point backwards and then walk your hands away behind you. Create some space. Bend your elbows. And let your head come to the floor or as low as it goes. doesn't matter about where it is. It's just feeling that nice passive stretch through your spine, feeling that nice stretch through the backs of your legs, lifting your inner arches up, feeling that nice stretch in your lower legs. Then wherever you are, we're gonna make our way slowly upwards a little bit and we're going to lift our toes pivot on our heels come all the way around to the left <clears throat> for low lunge here we take the airplane and step up and come up standing star And foot to the floor, hands down the side. Breath in, lift the hands up. Breath out, straight leg forward bend. Bend of the knees, hands to the floor. Walk the feet to the back of the mat and inhale through to plank, pressing into the fingertips. Exhale to the floor, knees, chest, chin, or a half plank. And then cobra or upward dog. And then onto your knees and up into downward dog. Or oh, lift your hip size, step over, roll over your toes, downward dog. Look up between the hands, bend the knees. And a little, little jump to the top of the mat. Drop the bum down, draw the arms out to the side. Slowly elevate up to tall mounted. Palms come down on your chest. Lean into your left foot. Lifting your right foot off the floor. Lean forwards as you take your right foot backwards, find the balance here. And then a couple of these knees to chest. You can do this with a breath. I am breathing out as I bring my knee in. I'm breathing in as I lengthen the leg. And then dropping that right foot to the back of the mat. Inhale, hands up nice and high, and then exhale, high, uh, lunge dip. Inhale up, twist around to the left, extend the arms out nice and wide, the twist in lunge, and then drop your left arm behind you, the right hand up, turn face the front, ground the back heel, warrior two. Turn the whole of the front arm up, reverse warrior. The breath in here. And windmill all the way down on the inside. Walk the hands around to the center again. Pigeon toe parallel your feet. Lean into your left hand. Turn the shoulders to the right. Take the right hand up. Twist. Turn and look up. Turn and look to the side. Whatever range of movement you've got. Down at the floor, drop that right hand to the floor. Put your tummy button in, sweep the left hand out to the side. Turn to the side, turn and look up. Turn and look down, hand to the floor. Lift your toes up, pivot on your heels, come all the way around. Low lunge on this side, and we'll take an aeroplane on this side. I may well have missed out an aeroplane on this side last time. It's a yoga practice, it's my excuse. <laughs> okay, step up into your aeroplane here on your right leg and slowly come up. Standing stuff, the foot to the floor, hands down the side, breath in, lift up. Straight leg forward, bend on the breath out. 
Bend your knees and walk the feet backwards now. Come to the middle of your mat. Take your feet to the edges of the mat. Slowly with your hands on the floor, bend your knees. Make sure your knees track over your toes. Come into a squat pose. Pull your pelvic floor up. Pull your tummy button in. Bring your hands to your chest. You can stay here in a um, molasses child pose, um, squat, or you can bring your armpits, your triceps towards your knees, plant your hands on the floor, press into the fingertips, rock forwards onto the fingertips, the hands, lifting the feet off the floor for a crow, or maybe lifting just one foot off the floor to practice your crow. You don't have to do crow, you can stay in squat, that's absolutely fine. Arm balances are great fun once you've got them, once you've built that confidence up. And then from our squat position, we'll roll back onto our bottom. And now into boat. So looking straight ahead, leaning back behind your sit bones, reaching the arms out, looking at your feet, keeping your core, ribs flattened, core pulled in. Take a twist in boat. So legs go to one side, to the left. The shoulders, the arms go to the right. Feel the oblique muscles activate now. And come back to center and a twisting boat to the other side. Again, feeling the oblique muscles kick in. Anytime this is enough, you can drop back onto your lower back and take a back roll, lumbar spine massage. If you're okay in boat, maybe a tour boat. Maybe that's there for you. And then come back to boat and level it out for a low boat. Using your core muscles here. Back to boat. Roll onto your lower back. Squeeze and release your lower back. And if you did all of those, very well done indeed. Okay. We're going to back roll up to a seated, crossing the legs when we arrive. Take a gentle twist, just twist through the core here that's just worked so hard. Squeezing into those tight muscles to allow a sense of release. And that sounds odd, doesn't it? But that's exactly why we do this after strong core work. And turn around to the other side. A little bit of a binded twist, leverage and around, squeezing into your core muscles. Release. Come forwards on your front. Okay, take the knees out to the edges of the mat. Join the big toes together. And then it's going to be uh, some of us, if some of people watching this, um, you might find this is really tricky. But if you're okay in hero, stay in hero. Um, you could have your knees together. I'm going to take my knees quite wide apart because I'm going to go into lying down, supine hero. Uh, and the reason I put my knees quite wide apart is because it's too much pressure on my knees otherwise. And I listen to my body when I do my yoga. I, I'm not totally dogmatic. Um, I'm not dissing any form of yoga, but you've just got to listen to your body. Don't worry about getting your body into a posture. It's not about that. It's really stretching the fascia, the tissue. So this is really good for my hip flexors. I take my knees out nice and wide. I walk my hands backwards. Maybe that's far enough for me, so I'll stay there. Maybe on my forearms, that's enough, so I'll stay there. And as you should as well, okay? But, you know, it's nice to experiment with range of movement. Just go with whatever feels right for you, okay? Without forcing it, just checking in with your body. It's your body. You've only got one, so you've got to be really careful with it. And then find a position where you can feel that stress. And it's nice stress. It's nice tension because you know it's not hurting you. It's mildly uncomfortable, but you use the breath then to massage that discomfort away. So if you're upright on your knees in hero, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. 
You can, if you've got the range of movement in your knees, bring your knees together in Lion Hero. Again, that's fine. Everybody's different. All I'm saying is just don't be dogmatic about this stuff because it's not worth it. Come forwards, come into a tabletop, and I will have that conversation with anybody, any yoga teacher wants to give me a call about that. Please do so. Pedal out the legs here. Just get the blood soil moving through the knees. Oh, that feels good. That just lovely um, hip flexor stretch, quadriceps stretch. Come down onto your knees. And we take a pigeon pose here. So knee towards the back, left knee towards the back of the left wrist. Lean onto that left hand. Bringing the lower leg forwards, keeping the ankle flexed. Toes point forwards, thinking about your knee. And take any position you want here. Bring the right hand back. Tuck the right toes in. You can stay here in pigeon. This is fine. And lift the chest up. Or you can go a little bit deeper. Lift the chest up. A little bit deeper by stepping that knee back. Lift the chest up. Whatever works for you. Okay, you stay here in pigeon. Releasing through the hip. I'm not going to take a, a low pigeon here. But by all means, you can if you want. I'm going to stay here because I just feel that my body needs this at the moment. Softening through the hip joints, softening through the glutes and softening anywhere, really. Just release uh, tension with the breath. Just notice how that immediate tension, that level of discomfort dissipates with a few breaths. OK, going to inch that back knee forwards a little bit. So we're going to come into Heron. So taking your left hand out to the side to lean onto your left hand, your left bottom, sweeping that Right leg forwards, extending the leg, pulling the toes in, a couple of teasing, gentle movements here, just gentle stretches. And pull it on, pushing the knee away. Just feel tension in the back of the knee, back of the leg. That's good enough. And release that stretch. Come forwards into tabletop. And we go again on the other side. So slide in your right knee towards back of the right wrist. Lean into that right hand as you draw that lower leg forwards. Ankle is flexed, toes point forwards. Return the left hand. Even pressure through both hands and inching back very, very slowly. Just feel how you feel. And get in the hands under the shoulders so you can go for that chest lift, shoulders back. And then go in where you want to go on this. I'm going to stay here. You can go lower if you want. I'm going to stay here, pull my belly button in, draw my shoulders back, puff my chest forwards. I must feel like a pigeon. I won't make any pigeon noises, though. I'm tempted to. I do in my classes. It's very off-putting. But feel the release where you can. Such a marvellous posture, aren't they all? Okay, and then inching that back foot forwards a little bit. Taking the right hand out to the side, so lean onto that right hand, create some space, lean onto your right butt, sweeping that left leg forward, lifting it up, straightening it, extending it, find some stability, some grounding, draw that leg up. Back it off a little bit, draw it up, loosening that fascia, back it off, draw it up and hold, pull the toe in, push the back of the knee away, feel some tension here. Okay, let go. Gonna come round to a wide leg forward bend slowly becoming one of my most favorite postures i used to loathe it with a vengeance so shuffling forwards on your sit bones and you're thinking well, what's changed well what's changed is my approach to it before uh, when i wasn't so um i guess you know miles on the clock hours on the clock i used to think i need to get low on this but actually it's really about feeling and release and breath 
So I'm going to turn my feet in slightly. I've shuffled on the front of my sit bones, my ischium. I'm going to turn my feet in, which will rotate my femurs in, because for my pelvis, my hips, that works better for me. I'm going to walk the hands forwards, keep my chest high, and then come forwards, bringing my chest, my chin forwards to find some tension in my ductus. My knees are starting to lift them a little bit. That's my hamstrings. So I'm just going to stay here for a moment and breathe and I'm gonna take short breaths in and long breaths out. And as I breathe out, I'm gonna soften my pelvic floor, I'm gonna soften my belly, I'm gonna breathe into my belly. So I massage with my diaphragm, my spine, which is really effective. And I'm gonna use my ocean breath, which is a very gentle sigh into the body. And I'm gonna go on a journey now of release. Just checking in with what's tense, what's really stretching, what's really stressing. And with me, and it may be with you, I notice, first of all, my ankles are tight. My ankle muscles are tight. So I'm just going to release those fellas. And that's interesting. I think that's possibly the end of a fascia train, a fascia, a length of fascia. It's when I release my ankle joints. Somehow it sends a release elsewhere in the legs. And I continue to breathe and continue to explore tension release. We're not forcing this, we're just releasing into it. It's going to be mildly uncomfortable wherever you are. And you might be high up. That's okay. Just stay with that discomfort and breathe into it. And just sense what's going on in your body. And then. Slowly come out. As you come upright, ground through the sit bones, take your hands under your knees, draw your heels together. Okay. Lift your toe or lift your toes up. Take your peace fingers, man, onto your toes. I'm going to spin around here so I can get a bit of cushioning. And then lean back behind your sit bones to lift your heels off of the floor and maybe straighten the legs to find a wide leg. Boat. If that doesn't work for you, just stay um, where you are. But you can with a lot wide leg boat. Do a little back roll here and use your core. Do this a couple of times. It's a great technique to develop. It's a back roll, but it's also using your core. Okay, come down on your backs. Draw your knees into your chest and squeeze and release your knees. Now we're just going to take another bridge pose just to counterpose that wide leg forward bend. So heels come into your glutes, head and shoulders on the floor. Flatten your lower back onto the floor and push into the floor with your feet as you lift up. As you lift up, shuffle your straight arms under your back and clasp your hands and press your little pinky fingers into the floor. Arms are nice and straight and strong. Press your triceps into the floor. Shuffle your shoulder blades towards each other as you lift your chest up. We go for an arm-supported bridge here as we drive up through our lower back. And our quadriceps and our hip flexors and our glutes really feel the power of this back bend here. Looking up at your tummy and follow those deep belly breaths as you breathe in and out. Slowly release, uh, take your arms away, pull your tummy button in and roll your spine down. Draw your knees into your chest, give your knees a couple of squeezes here. Drop your feet to the floor. Hands onto your belly, soles of the feet join, release the knees to the side in lying cobbler and taking a few slow belly breaths here. Target your breath down into the bottom part of your lungs and you feel your hands lift and fall with the breath. We're going to finish in breath, um, and you can take Shavasana after this uh, video by all means. But all we're going to do is lie here, reclined cobbler, 
And after three, we're gonna count, I'm gonna count you on the inhale. So three, two, one. Breath in for one, two, three, four. Breath out four, three, two, one. Okay, breath in one, two, three, four. Now breath out six, five, four, three, two, one. Breath in one, two, three, four. Breath out six, five, four, three, two, one. Breath in one, two, three, four. Breath out six, five, four, three, two, one. Breath in one, two, three, four. Breath out six, five, four, three, two, one. Try to breathe through your nose, two, three, four. Breath out six, five, four, three, two, one. Into the tummy, two, three, four. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Breath in, one, two, three, four. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Last one. One, two, three, four. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And allow the breath to revert naturally, normally, but still try to breathe down into your tummy. And you may well continue with that nice 10 second breath, six breaths a minute, optimum way of breathing. You can bring your knees together and you take your feet out to the edges of the mat and gently windscreen wipe your legs just to loosen off the hips. But the breath is super, super important to, um, it's important anyway to live, but to actually control the breath or control your mood. There's so much to learn about the breath. If you're not familiar with breath techniques and you want to learn more, please drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to share some of the stuff I've learned. It's changed my life, absolutely changed my life, knowing the breathing techniques that we learn in yoga and in other practices. Okay, now you can switch the vid off, do some shavasana for yourself. Um, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much. If you got anything out of that, um, yeah, if you want to learn about the breath or learn about the breath or do some breath techniques, give me a bell. We can do something on video on Zoom or anything like that. I'd be more than happy to. But in the meantime, enjoy your yoga. I'll see you next time around, hopefully in one of my public classes. Otherwise, um, stay safe. Enjoy your yoga. Bye.